what we're doing today is we're liberating CO2 from naturally occurring places where it exists today underground, liberating it, using it to recover oil, and getting the business effects from it. And when I talk to people in the industry, Denbury, Kinder Morgan, Anadarko, Chevron, I ask them the question time and time again, what is the limiting factor on us being able to increase the amount of domestic oil we're being able to produce in this country from EOR? And the answer back is the same one every time. Low cost, abundant supply of CO2. Now think about it. We got CO2, excuse my French, out the wazoo in this country from all of our fossil sources. And not to be able to, be, to get technology to a point where we can capture that CO2, utilize it to produce more domestic oil, and keep it from going to the atmosphere. I mean, what a great, what a great play. And again, as I was saying earlier, that's what we're doing. We're, we're not just talking to the coal industry now, Mike. We're not just talking to the power plant guys that had this looming <clears throat> concern of the waxman Markey bill around the corner and this inevitable desire to say, well, I, I, we, we better do something with our CO2 and we'll just bury it in the ground. But now we're actually connecting that industry and that segment with the oil and gas industry to begin to convene this value chain that we just talked about here. Because we have an opportunity to take a market and expand it broadly. You, you mentioned 25% of Texas's oil comes from enhanced oil recovery. That's only 5% in the United States. There's only 5% of our oil that comes from enhanced oil recovery. And we've actually made projections, done the research, and laid out a roadmap for us to be able to up that to 30% of domestic oil production coming from enhanced oil recovery. And the driver for it being low cost abundant supply of CO2 with the technology that we're working on today. And that's not just in the Texas Gulf Coast or out in West Texas, but it's in places like the Ohio River Valley, the Illinois Basin, down in the southeast part of the country. There's a lot of oil in the ground. You may find this kind of interesting, again, although I consider myself a Texan by a lot of years living here, born and raised in Ohio, the Saudi Arabia of the world for oil in 1925. Do you know where it was? Finley, Ohio. <laughs> Finley, Ohio. The other fact is 90% of the oil that was originally found in the state of Ohio remains in the state of Ohio today unexplored because back in the day it was rather medieval technology that was being used and but for the availability of low-cost CO2 and abundant supplies the state of Ohio could be transformed overnight it's not unlike the story of Texas today as though even though we're at 25 percent and people talk about what we do in West Texas and the East Texas oil fields anybody here hear about the rocks the residual oil zone that everybody's talking about in West Texas, it has volumes of oil that are unimaginable for the next hundred plus years in this country, transformative. Enhanced oil recovery with abundant volumes of CO2, far beyond what we're using today, by an order of 10x. But where's that CO2 going to come from? We certainly have plenty of it in this state that are coming from the stacks fossil fuel generating facilities. And so to be able to get that technology, get that CO2, get it where it needs to go, and do domestic oil production in the state of Texas, we've got a hundred year story here. And we'll be doing great things for the environment while we're doing it. So that's why, the, that's the message we're trying to get out there, Mike. And it, it's resonating, but it's, it's a lot of capital, it's a lot of play, it's a lot of, it's also a lot of optimism that the technology transfer.